conversations with our queens from across the world. They are entertaining, educating, with tons of passion. Welcome to the show, Queens Forever. All right, so let us see which country we're traveling to today. Oh, our people, here we go, Australia. It's time for us to meet our beautiful queen. As they always say, once a queen, always a queen. Queens Forever is the show you're watching us on. A humble thanks to Indus TV for having us here. Of course, River Comics for making life truly interesting with all the beautiful stories made in the most amazing way. Thank you to Be International and utmost thanks and gratitude to all our lovely viewers for showering us with tons of love. Where we are all coming at your doorstep, the entire world is coming at your doorstep and we are all in your hearts. So today it's time for us to meet the queen who has several titles to her credit. She's the one who allows every girl to dream big and makes their dream come true. She's also grooming those beautiful girls at the same time having her own beauty pageants. She started her career a couple of years back and we're going to truly get started with her beauteous career. So right from being the recipients of several prestigious beauty queen titles, maybe please welcome our Miss Thai New Zealand 1998, Miss New Zealand Asia Pacific 2003, second runners up, Miss Intercontinental New Zealand 2005. Miss Asia Pacific 2015. Now, if I really get into the other titles, it's going to be pretty long. But let me tell you about the several subtitles she's been the recipient of at different beauty pageants, right from Miss Popular to Best National Costume to Best Miss Congeniality, Best in Interview, and of course, the Best Personality. The one and only, let me please welcome our beauty queen today here on Queens Forever. Namphon Bennett from New Hi Zealand. Hi, everybody. Namaste. Namaste. Kia ora from New Zealand. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so you know, this is how the beauty queens wave. And this is also what I learned from Namphon. I remember. <laughs> you taught me this in Singapore. <laughs> how, to, like how to Not wave. Not like Queen people. Elizabeth, but a little bit like this. <laughs> yes, a little bit like this. So, so I'm, as we I'm more partial to this one these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> So uh, she's the one, of course, who had a great experience, traveled all across the world, been with beauty queens. At the same time, she's the one who gives them training as well. So today we have the right person for all of you so to inspire you and take you on an actual high. Nemphan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here with us. No, thank you so much to yourself, to River Comics, to Indus TV and to Bharat for having me as well. Really appreciate the invitation and very flattered by it. Thank you. Nemphan, when did it all start? Tell us about your childhood. When was the first time you dreamt of being a queen or you dreamt of wearing the crown? When was it? Wow. I, I don't think I ever dreamt of wearing the crown, but I remember there was, I think in the mid 90s, a Miss Universe pageant that was being held in Bangkok. And beauty pageants in New Zealand aren't so popular at the moment, but in the 90s, it was very popular. We'd have it on TV. And I remember that I was a very young girl and they had this one on TV and I was just like, wow, I really, really want to be up on stage one day that all the ladies are so pretty, all their dresses are so pretty. And of course, being I'm half Thai, half European Kiwi. So for it being in Bangkok as well, it was like, oh, and I could see where I am from this way as well. So um, yeah, that was that was my first moment. I think I was maybe seven or eight years old when that one came on. And I just was like, wow, this is amazing. So yeah. So Nemphan, how did you first get a chance to become a part of a beauty pageant? Or when did you first realize that you know, you could actually participate at a local pageant or a state level pageant before getting into the national level pageant. Well, for me, it all happened by accident. Um, I was 13 years old when I did my very first one. And it was the Miss Thai New Zealand. And of course, it's for the Thai community within New Zealand itself. And I had never been interested in beauty pageants before. I was a tomboy. I love sports. I was playing rugby, playing tennis, playing cricket. So, um, 
yeah, it was not my dream to be in a pageant. And my mother asked me, please, can you just show me that you're a girl? And um, can you do a beauty pageant for me? I would love to see that you have some femininity. So I said to her, okay. Um, and I did this pageant, the Miss Tiny Zealand for her. And um, I, I just happened to win it. My first time ever wearing high heels, my first time to do any kind of fashion walking. And yeah, I, I won it um, and won the Miss Popularity as well. It was very, very strange for me. And then after that, it beca became, you know, an entry point to modeling. And I did some modeling here in New Zealand. I did few TV ads here in New Zealand. I did some modeling in Bangkok. Um, so it opened a lot of doorways for me. Brilliant. And that's how it all started. So tell me, of course, having great exposure and, you know, a contestant for a national pageant, what is the preparation that gets into it? Well, I mean, it's different now. I'm a little bit older, but, um, and as you get older, it changes. I mean, when I did my first national pageant at 19, the, the Miss New Zealand Age Pacific, um, it was a lot easier to maintain my body. Um, I was already very athletic, so that was fine. Um, and then when I did the Miss Intercontinental in 2005, you know, a little bit more focus on exercise regime. Um, I think also for girls here in New Zealand, you know, we were at a bit of a disadvantage because it's, again, not a big industry here in New Zealand. So with me training girls now, I give them that, you know, this is the expectation, you know, the international standard is this, you need to have costumes that look like this. You need to be able to speak and present yourself a certain way, um, which I didn't have the benefit of in my generation. I just had to teach myself and hope that the costumes I had were good enough. But now that I have all that experience, I pass it on to other girls that, okay, this is the standard that you need to perform at in every aspect. You are watched all the time, you know, outside of the stage, you know. So um, there's a lot that goes into it, catwalk coaching, um, teaching about health and exercise and healthy eating, because I think that's really important that people actually eat properly um, to maintain their energy. Um, being familiar with the pageant you're entering um, and what their cause is um, and being able to talk about that, um, public speaking and being a good role model, as well as just basic etiquette, manners, um, things like that for when you're behind the scenes, having lunches, having dinners um, and so forth and, and anything else that goes into that particular pageant. Well, I know the list is endless, but let me tell you, Namphon is just talking about all this. But all these beauty queens actually practice every little bit of it. Knowing more about this, but you take a breather and, and please try to digest everything, all the beautiful tips that Namphon has given us while we take a super short commercial break and see you guys back.
Welcome back, post the break on behalf of Driven Comics, We International, in Nas TV. We are truly excited and thrilled to welcome you to the show, Queens Forever. And we are here with the truly beautiful queen inside out, Namphon Bennett from New Zealand. Namphon, uh, I would really want to know from you, you know, the best person to answer me this question. What okay. is the difference between beauty pageants that took place at the time you entered pageants around 1990s, towards the late 1990s, and at this point of time in 2020s, what is the difference? Well, wow, there's, there's so many differences, actually. I think now that there is a big focus on um, fashion, fashion is amazing, um, but there's also a big shift in um, being socially conscious. Um, so, you know, I think that's great. There's like Miss Earth pageants where there's a huge environmental focus and there's more and more uh, pageants that have that eco, that environmental focus these days. Uh, I also think that we're stepping away from what is traditionally beautiful where we expect the girls to be stick thin. You know, now it's more acceptable, more acceptable to be curvy curvy year um, and a lot of the pageants have gotten rid of the minimum height restriction as you know we are becoming a smaller place um, and everyone's of mixed background mixed ethnicities and it's not realistic anymore to have girls that are five foot ten and above entering these beauty pageants you know we are all different shapes and sizes so I think that is a really big change these days and there's also a small step at the moment away from what is traditionally associated with that country. So, for example, New Zealand is a melting pot of different cultures. And in the past, there used to be a very firm, we expect either a Maori girl or we expect a European girl with blonde hair and blue eyes. Whereas these days, because we have so many Pacific Islanders, Maori people, Myself, I'm half Asian, um, but we're still Kiwi. We are still born in this country. We are brought up in this country. It is our home. Um, so there's less, it, there's less of that. This is what we expect when we associate what people look like with a certain place. Oh, so true. So true. It's it's completely different ballgames altogether for, uh, yeah. you know, a Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for the great bifurcation. And uh, of course, I'm going to come back to your experience with the beauty pageant. What has been your utmost amazing experience you've had at any of the beauty pageant you'd like to share with our viewers? My favorite experience has to be when I um, entered Miss Intercontinental 2005 in Huangshan, China, which actually is coincidental because this week is the anniversary, our uh, 17th 17, 16 year anniversary since that, since that competition. Um, and the final night was on July 31, 2005. And I was so, so grateful to have received the Miss Congeniality Award, which was, of course, voted by the other contestants. And there were 77 other contestants there. So I was very, very humbled to receive this. Um, what made it even more special for me is my birthday um, is actually August the 1st. And none of the girls knew that my birthday was the next day, let alone did they know it was my 21st birthday. <laughs> so that, that was my 21st birthday was uh, the night of the pageant. And I only my roommate knew it was my birthday coming up. And when I got on the bus with all the other girls and the winner got on, everyone clapped for the winner, but when I got on, I had my trophy, my Miss Congeniality trophy, and I was already very excited. And then the entire bus of girls started singing happy birthday to me. And I was just crying. I was absolutely in tears. It was just the most beautiful experience. And I think I came away with the, the best um, award that you can come away with. So true. And I, I think, you know, for me, it's a prestigious thing, a very precious thing. Uh, because I think it's a tough thing to win Miss Congeniality because you want hearts of all the co-contestants, which is definitely not an easy task. It is a toughest task to do at a pageant, for sure. And it's the same pageant where you spend around 21 days, right? Uh, one whole month, a whole month in China. Whole and month. it was great. It was such a great experience for me because 
in high school, I actually studied how to speak Chinese Mandarin for five years. So this was a great real life experience of me applying something that I had learned. You know, I, I speak five languages as it is. So um, Chinese is my fifth language. And it was just great to be able to apply it. Amazing. And I uh, do remember the beautiful instances that you shared about this particular beauty pageant uh, with me in person, absolutely, at Singapore. And for all those uh, who really wonder that, uh, how do I know Nan Pong and about her so well? Let me tell you all about this very beautiful experience. So we met in 2015 at Singapore, and thanks to Santo Sapkota again, uh, you know, who invited me to participate in Miss Jewelry Queen. And let me tell you, um, I won the second runners-up at Miss Jewelry Queen, and Nan Pong was our first runners-up there. And how did I reach there was just destiny. I was in Malaysia for my award show and I just got a call, you know, that, uh, you know, it's just a uh, half an hour flight from Malaysia. Why don't you drop in here? And we are here at a pageant. So I didn't have my attire. I had nothing with me. And for the evening gown round, it is Nan Fawn who took me for shopping at Singapore helped me with needle and thread. We did every little bit we could do to give a trail to my dress. We did all that. And this is how I won the second runners up, which was unbelievable. And the entire credit Namphon really went to you and our beautiful organizer, uh, you know, ma'am who was there. Uh, and I remember that. Really, she's so this amazing. is how if she won Miss Continuality, it really means that she's there for everyone because she was there for me. And this is my first hand experience. So for all those especially for the guys and men who think that females have cat fights there. It's absolutely you mistaken. Not everyone does that. We do have people like Nan Fawn who really carry the subtitle of Miss Congeniality, which is extremely precious. So thank you, Nan Fawn, for that. And thank you thank for sharing you. your love experience. Before we go to our last round, I'd like to definitely ask you to give three tips to all our lovely viewers, to all those who aspire to become a beauty queen like you. So I think the most important and one that we've just kind of spoken about is to be genuine, be your real self and not only be your real self, but be real to the people you're interacting with and, and do things from your heart. And um, that's the most important thing, I think, for me. Uh, the second thing that I would say to people is be elegant. And I don't mean just in the way that you dress. It's in the way that you do everything, you know, how you talk to people and um, how you deal with. Um, overcoming challenges or, you know, when you get a not so favorable outcome, you know, if you lose, be elegant in losing because you just never know what's around the corner. So yeah, be elegant. And I think for me, um, have fun. Don't take yourself too seriously. I know a lot of pageant girls and they go in and they, they are like, I am the best. And, you know, they take everything every day. They come with full hair and makeup. And even when they go to rehearsals, it's not practical clothes at all by any means. It's over the top. And it's like, can you move in this outfit? And is it going to mimic what you're going to present on stage? Um, and it doesn't. So it takes away the fun. Um, they're not getting to have a good time with themselves. They're not having a good time with other people. At the end of the day, this is a once in a lifetime experience and you want it to be memorable for yourself for good reasons. So just have fun with it. And it's more likely that if you come away with a prize, that's the bonus. But you had a good time regardless. Lovely. Thank you. And of course, with this piece of advice, breathe deep and we'll see you right back here. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for We International Founder, President, Chairman, Mr. Bharat Goradia, Bollywood star. Mr. Bharat Goradia with legendary singers from Indian music industry. Spreading smiles over everyone's faces. Sports champion. The Dada Sahib Falki Award and Bharat Gaurav Pride of India 
award winner Mr. Bharat Goradia has been innumerably awarded across the globe for his outstanding work in the field of promoting Indian arts and culture all over the world. Welcome back, and I'm truly, truly thankful to our lovely lady, Beverly Tan, because of which we, Nan Fon and myself, met at the Miss Jewelry Queen 2015 at Singapore. Uh, please, Nan Fon, uh, tell me more about the beauty pageant world. How does the preparation really, how does one really get into the preparation? How long does the preparation take? Is it for a year's preparation? Is it few months preparation? Please tell us, for a beginner, how much in advance do they need to plan that I need to participate in a pageant in this particular year? So what would you like to say about this? You know, this is this is something that can't be measured, so to speak. It's a different journey for each person. Um, some people are going to be in a, in a better head space. They're going to be in a better physical space and financial space than others. Um, so... Everyone's really got to look at themselves and their actual available time. Um, I know that I, I currently look after Miss Earth New Zealand. I'm the event manager there. And um, just for me organizing the show, I organize a full year in advance. And I leave myself a minimum of three months to prepare the girl from the national competition winning night, the crowning night, until the beginning of the international. That is the bare minimum. Um, because you need to allow yourself time to get costumes and, um, you know, save money for any expenses that you may need. Especially here in New Zealand, we don't get much sponsorship from companies and we get zero input from our government um, in representing our country. So um, it's different for every person. It really is. But at, at this level, I, I allow myself a minimum of three months to prepare a girl. We've never spoken about the finance in our show. I'm going to ask you, does it really need a lot of finance or it just depends? Maybe you're getting a nice pageant to participate in like we have you know, in several countries and then, you know, you may have no finance at all, but you might still be on the top if you have the right attitude and the winning talent. Well, I mean, definitely possible. I've had girls um, that I've trained prior to having relationships with some companies here in New Zealand that have done well. Um, I trained Casey Radley, who um, got second runner up at Miss International in gosh 2013 and she didn't have any corporate backing um, she wore the same evening gown um, for the international final night that she wore for her national final night and she got like third overall at Miss International it was absolutely incredible but finances are important because um, you need to be able to a get from A to B. So especially here in New Zealand, we are so isolated from the rest of the world and it's very expensive for us to get anywhere. And um, we're lucky that we have a great passport and we don't need visas for too many countries. But even myself, when I went to India in 2018 to choreograph Face of Beauty International, um, applying for my visa cost me a lot of money, a lot of money, about 400 US dollars because I had a short time frame to do that um so it's very expensive um also the depending on how long you're going away and the kinds of outfits you're required to have for each pageant because some pageants require that you have certain items they can be extremely expensive as well and here in New Zealand especially hard to locate because our fashion is very limited um, so a lot of the time if you don't get things custom made which custom made is extremely expensive as it is, then you have to get it from overseas. And again, another huge expense. So here in New Zealand, finances are very important. And like I say, there is just no corporate backing and there is no governmental backing whatsoever. 
Wonderful. Uh, so thank you for uh, talking about this very important aspect on our show, Queens Forever. I think uh, one needs to really know about the financing uh, backup as well, because in case you don't find one, then you will have to definitely help yourself and find the right way out. So we are here in the very, very wondrous show. And of course, we're coming to the last segment. Pretty much interesting, where I'm going to take Namphon for a beautiful ride with a rapid fire round. Let's get started, Namphon. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Which of the beauty queens have inspired you in the past? Oh, I think the one that inspires me the most is Lorraine Downs, who is New Zealand's first and only winner of Miss Universe. Your favorite food, which you had to give up because of the beauty pageants? Macaroni and cheese. My family's recipe is amazing. I cook it so well. And pasta, cheese, cream, bacon, they are all things that need to go. <laughs> Your toughest round at the beauty pageant? Toughest round is the um, on-stage question and answer. I'm very good at talking, um, but sometimes it's just finding that one word that can make the entire difference. Oh, my God. So I was under the impression that that, is, that should be your easiest round. So which is your easiest round? <laughs> my easiest round is the judge's interview because you should just be yourself. No one knows you better than you know yourself. Well, let me tell you, uh, the way you answered questions to, uh, you know, the jury, um, you know, live questions, I thought that that would have been the easiest round for you, by the way. But absolutely amazing. <laughs> that uh, was my winning answer. Yeah, trust me. You're winning mantra, Namphon. My What's winning mantra. Winning? Um, I don't have a winning mantra as such. All I say is be yourself because you are more than enough. What is that important aspect to stand out from the rest of the co-contestants and have that own factor? What is that one important aspect in you? I think being genuine, doing things from the heart and just being 100% yourself all of the time. That's going to make you stand out. If you're pretending to be a persona of somebody else or pretending to fit into a mold, that's when you actually just fade into the crowd. Your favorite color for the swimwear as well as the evening round? is actually a um, royal purple. Um, I love it because not many people wear it. It looks great on my skin in particular, but it's a color that not many girls wear at the higher levels. Um, so yes, purple. I like that. I haven't seen anyone wearing, a, a, or probably I don't recollect anyone who wore a purple color. And I was imagining myself, okay, how a purple uh, you know, look on one. But I like it. You always like to select unique colors because you also stand out. That's right. That's right. And uh, one recent one, Miss Indonesia of Miss Grand International 2020, sure, a beautiful purple gown. I really, really wish I had the body to wear it. I'm a bit older these days and it takes a bit more work. <laughs> Who would you like to give the entire credit to for all the beauty pageants you won at several point of life so right from your parents who would you like to give the credit to Gosh, um first run definitely my mum and my dad my dad's a really um a stage dad I have to be honest my father's a stage dad and my mother is also a stage mother <laughs> so um wow. they get the credit for my first um the second one I would like to give credit to um Rose and Des Folger and Mila Manuel uh, and Prince Manuel. They organized um, Miss New Zealand Asia Pacific and they also gave me the opportunity to represent New Zealand at Miss Intercontinental, um, which was run by Detlef Terses, who I'm still in touch with these days. Um, Miss Intercontinental is probably one of the biggest achievements of my life and I can't thank him enough for um, looking after us so well and he, he just made me feel very special, especially that night after I won my Miss Congeniality Award. He himself was uh, just said some beautiful words to me. Um, and of course, you know, in Singapore, Beverly Tan um, and the TKS and Sons family. Um, and Beverly is just like family to me now. She flies me out to Singapore every year. Um, she provides my accommodation and I help her judge and organize her pageants depending on what she needs each year. And I cannot thank her enough. Uh, she's even flown my mother 
um, out to be with us and, and taking care of expenses for my mother. So um, really thank you so much to everyone that's been involved with my, my pageant journey, to all the girls I've encountered, yourself included. I have made lifelong friends all around the world a couple times over. Oh, beautiful. That was a real long list. We want to know uh, which is which has always been your favorite story or one of your favorite comics that you've been reading since childhood. Do you remember any of the stories of the comics? Gosh, you know, I'm I'm terrible with um comics, but I, I loved the cartoon adaptations. And right. I've always been I've always been a huge X-Men fan. I love X-Men. I wanted to be Storm. I thought she was wonderful. So yeah, X-Men. So I'm going to tell you and give you some great news. You can now download the app of River Comics, which is absolutely free anywhere in the world. And you can sit with your loved ones and enjoy watching the stories, make your life colorful and interesting by watching River Comics stories. So Nemphan, this was really interesting. I have a very special question for you. But for that question... Yes. I'm going to invite Mr. Baraji, our world's number one promoter of art and culture in the United States. May we please welcome Mr. Bharat Gauradiyaji. Hi, Nimfa, and how are you? Hi, Bharat. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very, very fine after seeing you. Super fine to see a beauty <laughs> with a title. Thank you. you know, it's so always much. a pleasure. <laughs> anyway, on behalf of our sponsor, River Comics we, and We International, it is my great pleasure and privilege to welcome you on one of the finest talk show. It's called Queens Forever. A very hearty welcome to you. And a very uh, simple question to you. Uh, if at all uh, you are given the opportunity to go on a date with any of your country's hero or celebrity or even Bollywood, Hollywood, whom will you take <laughs> and where will you take him? Gosh. Um, well, first of all, uh, my partner is a uh, is from Australia, so darling, please don't take this to heart. Um, <laughs> the the superstar, if I had the opportunity, the superstar that I would take on a date would be Carlo Barn. Um, I don't know if people know Carlo Barn, but he is an uh, international, um, well, a Hollywood superstar from New Zealand, from Auckland, where I'm where I'm based. Um, and he was in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and um, he's currently in a TV show called The Lost Boys. If I was to take him on a date, I'd want to do something very active. Um, I'd probably go to somewhere like a carnival where we can do dodgem cars and do like a roller coaster. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> he must be a lucky guy now. <laughs> I mean, he, he's very popular um, here in New Zealand. He's very down to earth. And um, yeah, I haven't had a chance to meet him yet. I've met quite a few people here, uh, not just Hollywood, but Bollywood. Um, yes. So I'm very lucky that I've had these encounters with people. I had a beautiful encounter with Selena Jaitley. Uh, I did Love Has No Language with her. I starred in that film with her. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. What an amazing answer. Uh, anyway, on behalf of our sponsor, River Comics, V International, Indus TV, and Simran, thank you so, so very much for sparing your valuable time, sharing your experiences, and giving us all the tips, especially to the young girls, about how to win the crown. Uh, so thank you very much. Wishing you all the very, very best in all your forthcoming projects, and see you very, very soon in USA. Thank you so much, Barak Goradia. Thank you to Simran. Thank you to Indus TV. And thank you so much to River Comics. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. of takeaway for each and everyone, wherever you are in the world. So all you need to do is dream big, make it a possibility, have the right vision, and dream big with your eyes open. Absolutely wonderful. Gonna take you into another part of the world and where do we travel let's truly be in touch only on indas tv see you guys soon with yet another beauty queen from yet another world out there see you guys mm -hmm.